Hey, and welcome back for the exercise number four solution walkthrough. So in this exercise, we're actually going to keep a lot of things the same in terms of exercise number three, but we're going to now use that knowledge we gained in exercise number three to find a different solution and learn a little bit about binder. So for this exercise, our sample that we are analyzing is going to be the um, sample named HunSystemService.apk, which is in the samples directory of the VM, um, or you can look up the sample that has the, this SHA-256 digest. And so as I said, we're keeping the context the same. This is a pre-installed app and you're worried that it has a vulnerability that allows any app other application or code running on the device to send it commands and have them executed um, just arbitrarily. And so the reason why we're keeping this all the same is that instead of learning new APIs this time or new privilege, I want you to be able to use the knowledge we gained last time, but then understand this whole new solution. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. So again, we start with the same starting points as last time. What are the entry points for the application, aka, you know, what type of app components could be exported so that other applications on the device could send information to this app? Um, and then what API calls can be executed, uh, or what API calls can execute commands. So as we talked about in exercise three, two of the most common Android APIs are runtime.exec and process builder, which we saw used in exercise three, and then if you have native code, it's system. So this is a refresher. We're using this knowledge and how we saw it applied in exercise three, but the ultimate solution will be different. So go ahead, pause the video from here, and give it a shot and see what you can find. So if you've come back or decided to just keep going with the video, um, let's start and like we did in exercise three, look at what um, app components could be exported in a way for other applications or code on the device to send information to our application. So when we open JDEX, we load HunSystemService.apk again, and let's open up the Android manifest, just like we've done before. So this app actually has a lot less components than some of the other apps we've looked at do. But one thing we can see straight up the bat up at the top is just like in exercise three, this application is running as UID system, that privileged user ID um, in Android. So again, that might've been why it was raised to us for auditing is, hey, this is super privileged, let's see what's happening. Um, and so then let's look at what components may be here that might be accessible to other um, code on the device. So we see a service, a receiver, um, and that's it within here. So let's start with the service. When we take a look at the service name system operation cert service, the first thing we do see is Android exported equals true. So it is exported and it can be accessible because it does not have a permission protecting it. So the one thing that could protect this service is if similar to they have th this tag here, if they put a tag saying Android permission, and it could be custom when they name, um, then that means it's exported, but any components that try to interact with the service would have to have that permission. So in this case, there's no permission there, so it is accessible to every component on the device. The other thing we have on here is a receiver called device owner receiver, and it is protected by the permission bind device admin that we can look up in the Android docs. It is enabled and it's exported. But again, because it has the permission protecting it, it is exported to only other applications or code on the device that has this permission. And this is a higher, more privileged permission that you can look up and read about in the docs. So let's start with the service as an entry point because that seems the most likely since it's not permission protected. So if we go to our source code and we follow the name, so com Honeywell Tools Hun System Service, com Honeywell Tools Hun System Service, 
actually, I'm jumping ahead. So let's go back to our slides for a second. So we found a potential entry point that's accessible. And now we want to look at some of our API calls that can execute commands. Um, oh yeah, so that's fine. So let's open that up. So here's system operation service. And so here's our code here. And so things that are interesting when you can interact and it's exported is um, for service, you have on start, on stop, on bind. Um, so those tend to be the commands that uh, the external components that are interacting with the service can do. So here we have on create, um, which looks pretty straightforward. They're setting up device policy manager. They have an admin component name, but not accepting any arguments and tents. It's just there. And so then we have on start command, which is just calling super. So nothing super interesting there. And then we want to look for if they've defined on bind. And so here they are returning a binder object. So we will trace back to look what this is. But so let's take a minute to talk about what binder is. So going back to our slides here. So binder. Binder is Android's inter-process communication, aka IPC mechanism, the way that different processes can communicate with each other. Um, and another way that it has been described can talked about is that it allows for remote method invocation. And to me, the easiest way to think about this is that it enables like a client server relationship or model within Android. Um, and while Binder has a lot of different le layers and <laughs> levels, we're going to focus on what the app level um, looks like. Um, in this and I think it's easier to start to wrap your head around it at the app level and then as you do more work you will slowly um, get deeper and deeper into what binder is. So when developers are using binder they define a binder interface using AIDL which is the Android interface definition language and so this binder interface is on the server side of this client server model and says hey I'm a server, I created this binder interface. These are methods that um, a client who wants to bind to me can call. And then the client, once it's bound to that service and has access to the interface, can then invoke these different methods that are made available through the binder interface. And so this can get very confusing to reverse engineer as you're looking as you're you're looking at it because while the developer writes this basic AIDL, once you're looking at the app, it has both sides of the client and the server implementation and it gets into the low levels and using a lot of switch cases. Um, so my hint to you is to look for the AIDL and that's going to be the higher level representation of what's sort of going on versus the lower level internal internals of Binder. Um, and you can generally find those by looking for classes that extend the I interface. Um, yeah, so let's go back and take a look at this. So here we have binder and it's viewing this, it's returning this object in on bind. When an app has not, or a service has not, does not have a binder interface, which a lot don't, it will just say return null or return zero in on bind. But here we're actually returning a binder object. So Let's find usage of this to see what it might be set to. And so here we see this is where we set the value. So we're setting um, the binder object to this class right here. So we can actually see its whole implementation Right there and this is actually can tend to be um, kind of a decompilers choose how to represent it so you'll sometimes see dot stub you'll sometimes see lots of dollar signs to um, designate inner classes so this is how jdex is representing it it's saying our binder object is going to be this i system operation dot stub 
um, class, and here's the implementation. So when we look through this, we see there's a lot of smalley. But we start to see the different um, methods that this interface is making available to a uh, to whatever client wants to bind to this service. And remember, because this service has been exported, it means any one on any app on the device can bind to it, um, and thus call any of these methods that are listed here. And as we scroll through, a lot of these are concerning, but again, for the context of this exercise, we have one very key question we're trying to answer. And as we keep scrolling, keep scrolling, we will see a method that is listed here that's called exe command. So um, JDEX doesn't have a great output of this, but a lot of other tools do or if you were on the command line, you would have seen it too, but exe command might have been the string that called your attention to this app as well, and that might have been your starting point instead of going the method I've walked you through here. So let's see, we'll keep going. You know, obviously you're, there's a lot of concerning <laughs> um, sort of uh, configuration, privilege configuration stuff happening here, but Okay, let's just do a control F. So if we continue scrolling down, we'll ultimately get to this method, which is exe command, um, and it takes a string. And if we start looking at the smally because it did not decompile cleanly, we see one of the first things it does is Java get runtime set that to r5 and then r5.exec, meaning runtime.exec, with our string r9 right here. So because this is within um, the binder interface, that it, for this service, any application on the device would be able to bind to the service, call exe command with um, whatever string they want and have it executed in this application's context, which is running a system UID, a very privileged UID. So yeah, uh, not good. Um, back to the slides. And so this just sort of sums it all up. And so the way they would fix this and why this is a vulnerability would be that they could protect that service um, in terms of one, maybe they don't need to have that functionality at all, like why do you need an arbitrary command? Or there should are probably just hard-coded commands that may need to be run, so do that instead. But in terms of anyone in the pit privilege escalation being able to call it, it could be protected by a permission, as we talked about at the top of, um, and that was actually the solution they did when this was um, filed as a CVE. And so, that is a different take and our first introduction to Binder, and congratulations, you have now reversed another app.